I don't know if you know Baby Vogue, the YouTuber, but he made a video explaining what does he think a community company is and why he thinks that Kitty isn't one. And when I first read in the comments like Kitty isn't a community company written by him, I was like, what? I mean, what is then? And he did a video explaining. So I wanted to go through the video, video, give my impressions of what I agree with, what I don't agree with, and then explain why, yes, KD is fully a company project. So let's get to it. And for being a true community, you need to be organized and be a legal entity. By the way, if you didn't know, KD is a a legal entity, but not exactly KDE. There is a separate organization which is called KDE EV, which is what represents the KDE community from a legal point of view. So in this case, we're very much uh, talking about the relationship between KDE and the KDE EV, which, which is the legal company. To be in control and of course to develop and create. So this is a movie giving some context about what a community company should look like to be qualified as a true community company. Which apparently Kitty is not. Let, let's oh, get to it. And then. it's version 0.1 of the manifest, so expect changes. And after reading you the manifest, I'm gonna share some thoughts that you're not gonna like. True. All right, let's do this maybe? We're starting with what a community company is, and I haven't published yet some form. N note please that the subtitle is Towards mostly to Linux Foundation like KDE and GNOME. So this is actually for KDE, so I think it's very reasonable for KDE people to reply to this. Formal statute, but in simple terms is a profit non-ownership company controlled by its members. Which KDE, by the way, totally complies with that definition. KDE is a non-profit yeah, it says profit. Uh, KDE is a non-profit. It's not meant to make money and we do have limitations, but also tax uh, benefits for being a non-profit. And so we have the manifest, which is the basic requirements a company should fulfill to be qualified as a community company. And the very first requirement is that the board of directors should be consistent and elected by community members. Now, how does this work in KDE? So KDE as the EV, as I've said, and in order to be an EV member, you ask to become a part of the EV. And then there is an election inside of the EV uh, voting for whether to include you or not in the EV. 99% uh, of the times you get included without any problem if you have contributed to KDE. When you're inside the KDE EV, every um, thought number of years, you, there is an election for actually the board which is the few people, like five or six, which actually control the EV. And those are elections within KDE EV members. So yes, in this case, it's totally elected by community members. But the members of board of directors cannot work or be paid by a non-community company with competitive pro In this case, KDE, I think, doesn't have any explicit rule against that. But usually when somebody asks to be elected to the KDE EV, it, they get asked uh, if they work for competitive uh, projects and uh, usually if they do they are not elected but as far as I know there's no uh, explicit rule about that. I don't think it's strictly necessary. I think that common sense in the voters should be enough. Projects. In this regard, GNOME Foundation is a non-community company because it is basically led by employees of companies. Uh, I, I think that this basically leads to a much more complex discussion. However, I'm totally not an expert of what the GNOME Foundation Board of Director is, so I'll just leave it to GNOME people and just going to talk about KDE. Companies with competitive products. A community company has in a traditional board of directors. The bot is extended both in size and duties and should also involve the lead developers and engineers of companies' projects. In here, I think that there is either, a, I could call it a misunderstanding, or at least uh, that's not how KDE works. And I don't think this is any better than how KDE works. So the board of directors of KDE is only worried for uh, legal stuff because that's the EV. EV is legally representing KDE community, but it's only legal stuff or you know, managing re relations with other companies. When it comes to techni technical things, technical things are discussed 
in the open, in like KDE in the GitLab instances, and they're discussed with whoever wants to come there and discuss. Uh, the board of director is not like should not have the power of saying how the technology should be implemented because that's up to the developers and the developers should discuss it in the open regardless of who is in the board of director. So in this case, KDE, the uh, board of director is only about legal, uh, the legal entity and the development is brought forward from the, uh, de from the developers regardless of the board of directors. And honestly, I don't think that's bad. That means that in a community company, it is very essential that the board members to get paid by the company. Uh, in Kitty, this doesn't uh, happen. The board of director is not paid by the Kitty Foundation. It would, to some extent, be a conflict of interest because such thing would probably be needed to be implemented by the board of director themselves. So they would be like, okay, now we get paid and that's it. And since they are only representing the legal side of it, I think it's more important to pay for developer first. Itself. Community members shouldn't only be active, but also regular contributors. An important objective of a community company isn't to grow its community, but constantly reforming it. This totally happens in KDE. The members of the EV, but in general of KDE, are contributors by definition, basically, and they also only get really voted inside of KDE EV if they are contributors. But I mean, all of those people who ask to be in the KDE EV are contributors. So yeah, this totally applies. Also, membership cannot gain by donations because money shouldn't generate money. Yeah, in KDE, in order, in order to be part of the KDE EV, you ask to be part of it or you contribute to KDE and it's not about donations at all. Money. A community company should release on an open model, both for software and hardware. KDE totally fulfills this one. Everything that's made by KDE is open source and the hardware uh, we work with like Pine64 to make sure that it's as open as we can make it to be. So yeah. Because that's the only way to attract new contributors and grow bigger. A community company should release community projects and for doing so, very often is appropriate to use software or hardware by other companies. But it is very essential to develop, control and lead the crucial parts of their stack. In this regard, KDE Foundation isn't a community company because due to the extended... Okay, so this is controversial as a best and uh, wrong at worst. So uh, first of all, it says that Qt is a proprietary toolkit, which is false. Qt is an open source toolkit. It is open source. There's no like doubt about it. All of the code from Qt is open source. There are open source, open source licenses to use it. So it's not proprietary. That's just wrong. Also, the idea that it should control and develop their main parts of the stack is, uh, w it doesn't make any sense because if you're doing like a desktops, all of the applications, there's only a certain amount of things that you can control downstream, which is under the hood. So the toolkit, maybe you can try to control it, but that's hard already. And then there's also even lower stuff like the compiler, like all of KD projects rely heavily on the fact that they have to be compiled, but it's not like we can control the uh, C++ compiler. That's just not going to happen. And that's just an example. There are hundreds of very big projects that KD rely on to exist, like Qt, but also C, uh, G plus, GCC, GCC, how it's pronounced, the C++ compiler, or CMake as an ex another example. Obviously, that, that's not an issue because it's normal to rely on projects, especially open source. KDE mostly, I think, only relies on open source projects, really. Then I think the only issue that Baby Vogue is trying to bring up that is that a community software project should only rely on projects that are fully open source. Uh, QD is fully open source. There's also a... QD releases for like companies, but we use the open source ones, so no. And maybe QD, technically speaking, is not a community software. You can't join QD just because you want to, but I mean, you cannot rely only on software made by community software. So 
I, I really don't see the point here. So it's normal to rely on other software. And as far as, as long as the software is open source, it, it's fine. Qt is not a threat to, Q, uh, to KDE. Baby Vogue is like super worried about this, he even wrote me private, privately. I tried to explain him that Qt is not going to kill KDE in any means. Qt is not like an evil company that's trying to destroy us. We actually have a relationship with Qt. We have like a board, um, a working group that manages the relationship between KDE and Qt. Qt is releasing uh, open source. Qt is, is being released, sorry, as open source. So uh, everything is fine. It just made this up. Qt use Plasma is in a community project. Even if Qt went crazy and decided to make everything closed source from now on, KD will still survive without any issue because what we have currently of Qt is already open source. You can't close down what you've already open sourced. So we we'll, would we'll just fork it and continue on bug fixing. KD developers right now already contribute to KD with sorry to Qt with bug fixes. So even if we had to fork it, we would and we would do fine. A community company is eligible for taking loans from banks or buying buildings for their activities, but they can't hold assets that aren't related to their business, like shares of other companies. Yeah, I mean KD doesn't have any shares of other companies or such things, so no issue there. A community co company is only in fully owned by herself. Makes sense. Although there is a virtual sharing system that each member owns exactly one share, and profits are distributed equally. Yeah, this one d d doesn't work. Th that's not how it works, because e <laughs> if the, the profit that's made by a company is never like distributed equally to all members as far as open source goes, all of the ma money is managed through, as an example, a funding group, which decides together how to use the money. We all decide together how to use the money. We don't just give part of it to each member. That would be like, th that wouldn't make sense. Like you use the money you get to hire developers. You don't just give 100 euros to all of the members and say, okay, now can we give it back so we can hire somebody? To each member. The biggest challenge of a community company is to give motivation and encouraging personal initiatives for her members. Salaries aside, the community company should provide a fair mechanism to award the contributors that accomplish. Yeah, Kitty kind of has these things. As an example, we do have rewards for people uh, inside of KDE that contributes to certain aspects of it. Every year in academy, there is this uh, giving the rewards and that's actually encouraging for people. Of course, it's not like money prizes because that would mean that you would, people would try to convince people to make them give the money to them. That's not how you deal with money, but we do have a reward system the most by distributing a large percentage of their annual profits to a small percentage of their members. Yeah, no, that's not how you manage money. <laughs> that wouldn't work. That, that would be a mess and that would create so many political tensions because uh, I can assure you 100% that people would complain about uh, people uh, would say that those people, those small percentages, percentage sorry of people that would get a larger percentage of profits they would say that they are like uh, convincing the board to give the money to them without actually doing enough and there would be a lot of discussion about it and it just wouldn't work that's not how you deal with the money in a community project you make all of the money go to a working group that uh, manages it and then they make proposals on how to spend it and then they all get voted together but you don't just give money a lot of money to certain developers because you think they have done enough because that would generate years of discussions that, that just wouldn't work Numbers. let's keep in mind that baby vogue never actually was never actually a part an active part of any community projects and i think that in moments like this it shows because he never actively contributed to like KD plasma or gnome for a good period of time he is from the outside criticizing these companies but being from the inside you realize that things are not as easy as they seem furthermore a community company can also buy innovation and expand by acquiring non-community companies as long totally as they will turn sense. them to community 
Another thing is that a community company can be split to two. Yeah, the, these are details, but they all make sense, obviously. Two community companies can be merged to one. For example, GNOME could be merged with Mozilla Foundation. Th this just doesn't make I'm sorry, th this just doesn't... It's so unrealistic. It's so unrealistic that it just doesn't make any sense. It's not an example. It's a fan fiction. It, it, it just won't happen. GNOME and Mozilla are completely different projects, doing completely different stuff, with completely different uh, ways of working inside of them. Mozilla is not a community company. We know that. Like, Mozilla is a company. It's a profit company who tries to make profit, who work in a certain way. It's not like you can join Mozilla development. Like It has developers. Gnome is not like that. It's a, it's a community project, uh, community company, sorry. They're completely different things. They can't just merge. And this thing that Gnome needs a browser and a cloud, no, it doesn't. And Firefox needs an operating system desktop or it will die. N no, that's just not how it works. Like, this is so crazy. So GNOME could gain a web browser and cloud infrastructure, and Firefox could it's gain It's not an like operate. if you join with Firefox, then, whoa, cloud infrastructure out of the blue. No. And it, GNOME, I mean, you could, you can already use Firefox in GNOME. That's... a system that is crucial for their existence. And by the way, I'm planning another movie on that. Yeah, it's a dream. It's fan fiction. That's just not going to happen. And finally, a community company should never be too big to fail. In a healthy ecosystem, existing community companies could die, but new community companies would be born and continue where others left. Because weird, but okay. Because eventually, community will prevail. Very weird, but okay. Unless if AI prevails first. A community of robots then? Many robots, but a single AI. Okay, this is where the video completely gets like out of topic. I think I've already said enough. I think that Baby Vogue really shows that he doesn't know what he's talking about most of the time when he talks about being part of a community company. And when he says that Mozilla like needs our desktop or it will die, and then it sh and because of that it should like join with GNOME. That, that that's just a crazy.